Hey, what do you say? Joe pal, Joe D. Joe D. Raw. Little Van Morrison playing. My brown eyed girl. Like that music. We'll just turn that down. Actually, maybe I'll just pause that. I'll listen to it later. Sorry about that, guys. Let me see. Today's February 11th. I would have sent you a video yesterday. I couldn't talk. Why? Well, I was at the V Twin Expo over the weekend. And uh, <laughs> it's funny. My old pal, industry associate, actually. I don't use the term loosely, my friend, Scott Hakins, the Count, as we used to call him, uh, works at SNS Cycles now, one of the greatest uh, industry leaders of all times. Hey, Cat, get out of here. This is my time. 55 years old. Actually, I guess, I guess SNS is 56 years old, same age as I am. Well, anyway... I saw him the other last few minutes of the expo on Sunday. He couldn't talk either. We started laughing. I says, "Why can't he says, why can't we talk?" I says, "Cause we do all the talking." <laughs> I had dinner Saturday night with an old friend of mine, old pal of mine, uh, 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 Mike Score, works at Biker's Choice now, and uh, another fellow by the name of Mike Helms. Two really nice, nice guys. Uh, worked with them at Custom Chrome, known known uh, known them for years and years, and uh, you know I, I live here alone. I've got my four dogs. I got a cat, as you saw, hamster, lizard, goldfish. Christ, it's a, and they're all old. It's like a geriatric ward for animals. <laughs> well, anyway, I uh, uh, you know, and of course I've got my children with me a lot very rare that I actually have face-to-face -face adult conversations though not I mean in a normal week um, you know 24 hours a day uh, I could go days without literally without having a face-to-face -face conversation with an adult that I know that I can have you know a detailed discussion with about things other than the weather so when I get with people I know, especially people I haven't seen for a while, I guess I overdo it, so. Mike Score was able to handle it. Mike Helms, I wore him out. <laughs> he ended up having to go to bed. <laughs> so anyway, guys, thanks for letting me talk anyway. But uh, as I said, today's February 11th, and I will tell you, it's colder than a well digger's ass everywhere. Uh, saw a thing on Facebook from... Uh, my old pal uh, Ryan Thomas up in uh, up in uh, he lives well he lives in, in uh, 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 Youngstown Ohio area but he works at JMP Cycles in Animos Iowa so he lives there part of the time as well and uh, it's like 26 degrees this morning I mean that's cold that's ambient temperature 26 degrees um, you know well jeez uh, global warming hey Al Gore. <laughs> Yeah, okay. I'm pointing to my, my my brain like he's stupid. Who cashed the check on all that gimmick? You know, Al Gore. But anyway, um, I wanted to touch base and see what's going on. You know, my girls the other day, and I'm just looking on Facebook here right now. Um, I put a little story on here. And it's pretty funny. I'm sitting with my girls the other day, and I said, you know what? We got President's Day coming up Monday. You got no school. They said, "Yeah, yeah, cool." I said, well, what, "What's what? What is President's Day?" And one of them pops up, and then Christy says, "Oh, I know what that is. It's uh, it's when the president comes out of the White House, and if he sees his shadow, we got four more years of bullshit." Oh, my goodness. Smart children. Smart children. Hopefully you didn't see a shadow. God. Um, got a new show I'm going to start doing. Uh, this week, actually. And it's going to be called uh, Cadillac Joe D, the Industry Insider. Uh, and that would pertain to the motorcycle and power sport industry. And I'll do it on 
I haven't quite decided yet, probably Monday or Tuesday uh, and on uh, Friday. Reason being that I'm hoping to get many industry people uh, watching it. And it'll have information about products and different things. I'll, I'll, I'll gather the, the content from places like the IMBBA, International Master Bike Builders Association uh, newsletter, the uh, uh, National Motorcycle Museum newsletter, the Sturgis Motorcycle Museum newsletter, uh, from various um, news organizations that I'm partnered up with, like... Uh, well, I mean, hell, all of them, I guess, really. Uh, Bikernet.com, uh, Motorcycle USA, uh, Ultimate Cycle. Um, I mean, the, the, the list goes on and on. I don't mean to forget anybody because I read all of your stuff. Um, and, you know, take the highlights and the most interesting things uh, and talk about some new products. And hopefully dealers will watch this thing and we'll give them an idea or two on, on how to drum up business and, and uh, what direction to... Uh, to go in on certain things, you know, product selections and companies to do business with. And, and it won't just be a pitch about my clients. You can rest assured, if you see a banner on my homepage, www.proridersmarketing.com, uh, if there's a banner on there, that's a top flight company to do business with. Because as, as I have stated on numerous occasions, I'll only hang out with headliners. At this stage of my career, in this stage of my life, I don't have time to deal with people that I don't admire, that I don't like, that I don't trust. You know, only, only, and, and same thing goes with my clients. If they can't deliver the goods, and they can't do it at a fair price, with a smile on their face, and do it consistently, and be a product that I would spend my hard-earned money on, I can't represent them. I can't be enthused over that. It's like me trying to be a car salesman. You know, I worked at a Cadillac dealership for three months. Poor guy comes in. You know, hey, he wants to buy a car. I can't stuff this guy in a Cadillac when all he can afford is a Chevy. Because I know when he gets that payment book, he's going to be bumming. So that's the way I am with, with the industry in general. If I don't believe what I'm saying, I can't do it. Um, I just can't. You know, I, it's not fair to anybody. Uh, especially you, the viewer. So uh, that's just the way I look at it. Now, a few personal things, and I got to get to work. I got a lot of stuff co uh, cooking from the V Twin Expo, which was a tremendous show. You know, people talk about, oh, it's gotten smaller over the years and this and that. Hey, you know what? I'm into qu uh, quality, not quantity. The the vendors that are there are serious about business. Um, you know, if you're not there, you're kind of conspicuous by your absence. Why aren't you there? Now, I'm not saying everybody that that's not there is not serious about business. Some of them have gone to a different track in their business where they're doing more direct retail. In that instance, a dealer show, you know, serves no purpose. So there are some exceptions to what I'm saying here. But if you've got... If you want to build up dealer business and you want to be seen by dealers, you want to be seen by other vendors that maybe you can do business with, um, you know, because we, we don't all go there just to see dealers. I mean, in fact, quite honestly, I didn't see any dealers. I didn't have a booth. I'm walking the floor having meetings, one every hour on the hour, eight in the morning to eight at night. And I'm seeing uh, pals and, and clients and customers from... Uh, from Germany, from the Netherlands, uh, from the Far East, from Australia, Canada, you know, uh, all over the United States. Um, and, and uh, you know, so there's many reasons why we go. But, uh, you know, don't, don't spew your negative crap. Nobody's interested in hearing it. And I'll tell anybody that, especially a dealer, a motorcycle dealer, or anybody in business, don't be a drama queen or a drama king. You know, people come into your place. The first thing you do is start pissing and moaning about how slow business is. It's quiet. It's cold. It's this. It's that. You know, a lot of times they never come back. They don't even consciously know why. I do. Because they don't want to hear the negativity. Negativity breeds content. It's no good. I mean, 
you know, if every time they walk into your place of business or they see you on a personal level and all you're doing is complaining, eventually they don't want to be around that. You know, I don't. I mean, hey, we all bitch occasionally. And sometimes we do it, uh, you know, comically and we, we want to have fun about it. You know, the weather, oh man, it's colder than the well digger's ass, blah, blah, blah. But generally speaking, you know, serious uh, 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 comment, serious comment about um, nothing but negativity is not going to get you anywhere, folks, so forget about it. Um, but on the other hand, you know, uh, there are times when you can, uh, when you can uh, uh, mention something and it's not, you know, necessarily construed as just empty pissing and moaning. Here's an example. Everybody knows I'm an animal lover, you know. I'm reading through here. Now a lot of people are getting tired of seeing all these abused animals and everything, and I agree. I mean, again, that's the negativity. Hey, we all know it. I'm going to try to stop it or cut back on it. You know, I'm compelled to, to spread the word because I, I hate to see this stuff. But I will mention one story that, that's just a damn shame. In Copenhagen, this uh, little baby giraffe is not, uh, uh, they, they, the handlers didn't feel that it had the genetic makeup to be a real strong, you know, in, in, in genetics and in evolution, the strong survive. So animals in captivity, they try to um, do this selection themselves and not natural selection. Well, they take this poor little thing, they figure, hey, you know, it's not the strong one. Rather than donate it to another zoo who many of them wanted to, many other zoos wanted this animal, you know what, they killed it and fed it to the lions. And they did it in front of a bunch of spectators, children. And one of these morons said, well, we think we did a good thing because now they know the anatomy of a giraffe. Excuse my language. Fuck you! That's terrible, you know? I, I, I don't even want to talk about it anymore. It's on my Facebook page, you just Google it, Copenhagen Zoo. They're a bunch of assholes, as far as I'm concerned. Um, uh, no excuse, uh, to me, no excuse for that. That's unacceptable. Um, now, here's another one, negative thing, but you know, it's something that you should know about. Uh, you know, for you Starbucks lovers out there, you know, they suck, in case you don't know it. And I know one bad apple can't, shouldn't spoil the whole bunch, but these stories go on and on and on. I've had bad experiences at Starbucks on numerous occasions. Um, I'm not saying I'll never go there again. Uh, my children like it every now and then for a treat. One of the, they got a few non-coffee drinks. Um, but generally speaking, I try to avoid the place. It was a veteran. Uh, guy's got one leg. He's got a service dog. He has the service dog because he has seizures. Dogs can sense when you're getting ready to blow a gasket, I guess, in, in terms of a seizure. And they, 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 they can know, these trained dogs can know, you know, five minutes before you're getting ready to be flipping on the floor like a fish. This animal serves a good, a good purpose. I mean, if you're driving a car or whatever, you know, I mean, maybe there's medication you can take or what have you before you're gonna be uh, all flipped out. Or at least you can get in a safe place. And uh, a Starbucks employee has this guy, he comes in with his dog, he's got the vest on it so he knows the service dog. And um, <laughs> not only does he just, he doesn't pull him aside quietly and say the dog's not allowed though it is allowed by law, moron. Um, he makes a big deal out of it, embarrasses the crap out of this veteran of a war, okay, a veteran, a guy that that uh, uh, protected you, moron, Starbucks moron, and uh, rooted the guy out, threw him out. You know, unbelievable. They should, you know, if you're work, you're gonna work in a place. Know the rules. Fact is, the guy's protected by, by the law anyway. He shouldn't have never let him out. Of course, the kid from Brooklyn. Regardless of where you're seeing this, go to my Facebook page, personal page, 
Cadillac Joe DiStefano. Or go to YouTube. Punch in kid from Brooklyn, Starbucks. <laughs> he has a vulgar tongue. He's a funny guy. I'm from the Northeast, so that stuff doesn't bother me. We talk like that. Uh, sorry for my Christian pals that, that don't uh, use that, that foul language. Uh, but it is comical nonetheless. And it's very true. <clears throat> they're way overpriced. They're rude. And they get a lot of balls for having a tip jar there to begin with. So check that out. Um, let's see. What else do we have here for news today? Oh, sad day. Shirley Temple. She died at the age of 85. Uh, film child, uh, child film star icon from, I guess, probably uh, from the 40s and 50s. I mean, you figure she died at 85. So, let's see, 70, 30. She was probably, it was probably in the 1940s when she became popular uh, into the 50s. And, of course, you know, once you lose your cuteness, then you're out of work. <laughs> I don't think she did much in her adult life, but she probably, uh, you know, she always has been held in high regard for her impact as a child and uh, she's just passed away so rest in peace Shirley uh, I watched your stuff um, I didn't go to the theater to watch it I, I'm not that old though some people think I'm that old and I don't like that but I did see your stuff and uh, I always enjoyed it and I'll continue to watch it on uh, DVD and so forth the beauty of technology is that it'll uh, live forever and so will you so that's about it for today, guys. Again, cold out there, bundle up. What's the matter? Here's Lucy the hound dog I'm petting. She's a beauty, one of the best dogs I ever had, huh, Lucy? Yeah, Chandler tried to bite me the other day, the golden retriever. He don't like it when I leave the house. So he starts barking, he shows me his teeth. Arr, he's all mad. Then he tries, to, he tries to bite me. I don't know that he would rip me apart, but he's nipping away at my jacket tails and so forth. And, then he really, he, he actually bit me. Yeah, and I'm not gonna beat him and, and kick him and all that. I mean, I might push him away with my foot if I'm getting scared, you know, but, but I'm not gonna, I mean, he's, when I take somebody in, dog, person, whatever, I'm there for the long haul. But Lucy don't like it when people screw with me, or dogs, she attacked him. <laughs> I'm going, Lucy, get him, get him. <laughs> she ain't hurting him, you know, cause he's big and strong. But uh, anyway, so uh, for Lucy, for all the other animals, for gorgeous Jimmy Garvin, baby, and for your old pal Cadillac Joe D, I'm always glad to see you. Spay and neuter those pets. Stay warm, be kind to each other, and get to work. I've got press releases to write. I've got stacks of business cards. Uh, it was a good show. Uh, thank you, Jim Betlock and Paisano Publications and Easy Writers Magazine for putting on that V-Twin Expo. <laughs> Lucy thanks you, too. Help us thank you. Thank you very much, baby. That's it. We're going to put Johnny Rivers back on, and we're going to get to work. Not Johnny Rivers. Van Morrison. But Johnny Rivers will come up. Have a great day, folks. Cadillac Joe D. Signing out.